let's face it, we can become quite attached to our mobile number. After all, those 11 digits are totally unique to us. So, it's understandable that you want to keep hold of that number when you move between networks. It's known as porting, and the process should be a simple one. First of all, your current provider, say EE, needs to generate what's known as a PAC code, and that allows you to leave. Once EE has that, it'll take your number and hand it over to the new provider, say Vodafone. It then has to put everything in place and have the number registered and up and running again on the new network the next working day. But here's the problem. Vodafone's ability to keep a grip on the situation can leave a lot to be desired. It was supposed to move Rachel Conkar's number across from O2 in February. I've had the number for eight years plus. Everybody's got it, um, friends, family, my bank. You know, it, it means a lot to me. Like all customers, Rachel was given a temporary number for the 24 hours it's supposed to take Vodafone to complete the porting. But her old number didn't arrive for six days. And when it did, she couldn't receive calls or texts. People are trying to reach me in my original number and um, thought that I was being rude or um, just ignoring them. I've spent absolutely hours trying to get it resolved. Um, I've, I've made numerous phone calls. I've been into the store. Um, I've been on web chat. Um, I've spoke to, a, I don't know how many people, 20, 30 plus people. Um, and it's been a nightmare. And when we saw her eight weeks after the porting problem, her number still wasn't working. When people try and contact me on my original number, this is what happens. It's not good. If your number fails to materialise, it may well be that Vodafone hasn't just lost track of it. It could be that they've given your number to someone else. That's not my number. Unbelievable. When music student Raina Washbrook's number still hadn't arrived four days after leaving T-Mobile, she complained at her local Vodafone store. The woman in the store, she looked at my number and realised that it was another account. Uh, well, it was registered to another person and it was from London, just like a complete stranger. Her number had been given to a man called Pavel. She says Vodafone told her to call him and sort it out herself. It turns out Pavel had been trying to port his number to Vodafone too, but he'd been given Rainer's instead of his own. Pavel's been receiving messages from my bank and very personal medical messages, which I really, obviously, I want to keep private and I don't want anyone else to see, but he's been receiving them. <laughs> We've heard from dozens of people, all with their own stories, about the kind of effect the Vodafone porting problems have had. In some cases, it creates annoyance or inconvenience, but in others, the impact is much more profound. When Vodafone failed to port David Villiers across from Orange, he too was given a temporary number, but that didn't work either. Well, the most I would get out of them was, we don't really know what the problem is, but we guarantee it will only take up to 48 hours um, to, to get it resolved. And then it would take another 48 hours when I would chase it and it would carry on in the same vein, basically. David was left waiting for weeks and it meant on one particular day, he missed some important news. My grandfather passed away um, during the time I was, I was disconnected. My parents weren't able to reach me. To not be able to pass on um, sad news to, to a family member is completely unacceptable. Whilst not having a number may not always hit you hard emotionally, in some circumstances it can severely affect you financially. Mobile hairdresser Kelly Wright relies on her mobile to book her appointments. When she moved from O2 to Vodafone in September, her number did initially follow her. But when she returned from a holiday, she realised her calls had stopped coming. 
Normally my phone's always going off with texts or calls from clients, but at that time it was just completely silent. So it would have lost me a few hundred pounds because no clients could book me for any appointments. Sick of being stuck without her number, she asked to leave. But guess what? Vodafone said she'd have to pay nearly £800 to break her contract early. Kelly refused and stopped paying her monthly bill, something the company did not like one bit. I came home and I had a letter from Vodafone and it said that a debt collector would come if I, if I hadn't paid the, paid the money and, uh, yeah, that was just icing on the cake, really. Just stressed me out even more. After four long months of arguing, Vodafone eventually agreed to release Kelly free of charge. So what do we have? Numbers seemingly lost forever or arriving and not working. Important messages missed and business deals lost. I think it's fair to say as far as porting is concerned, Vodafone is sailing far too close to the wind.